Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 10. So this tutorial we're going to add in another character which is going to sit in this chair that we brought in at the end of last tutorial. We're going to add some sound effects, we're going to work a little bit more with animation and deal with some more UI. We've got a lot to cram into this tutorial. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, first and foremost, let's bring in a, another character which will be able to sit in this chair right here. And the idea is we want to look for a character that will be sitting down. So let's head to the asset store and let's search for sitting animation. And obviously we want things to be free because everything on the channel is done free. So free only. And the one I've gone for is this one right here. And this may actually come in useful for us later on in the series because it has an astounding amount of animations that we could use. So I'm going to bring this in. Feel free if you want to do the same. Import, download, whichever. And I've gone ahead and already brought it in. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Now there is one thing I will mention about this specific asset. When I brought it into the scene, all the materials had gone a little bit funny. They lost their actual texture. So all I've done is just reattach the textures which are in this folder to each of the materials that are relative and necessary for this particular character. So if I bring it in now, we can see that it has pretty much lost all of its um, materials. So I'm going to rotate him 180 degrees. And yeah, we can see he's lost everything. So this uh, model is going to require a little bit of work, but that's not to worry because it gives us a chance to explore how we can do things. So if we take a look at the actual basic pack, as it's called, I'm going to F2 and rename NPC chair. Now, if we take a look at this, this one relates to his eyes. They're not going to be relative because the idea of what I want to happen here is he's going to have a bag over his head. The idea is he's being kidnapped. Next one down is his hands, so we'll probably just quickly need to reattach the hand material to his hands, which is this one. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Uh, the next one is his body, that's the main one, and this right here is the body. And there we go, we can see him taking effect of how he looks now. Uh, so I'm just going to do them two for now, and it's up to you how many more you want to do. Either way, what we now need to do is apply the sitting animation texture, and we can get that by clicking this button here, finding sitting down, which is this one right here, hold control, press D to duplicate, to extract it outside of uh, the FBX file. So now it's its own item and drag and drop that onto the NPC himself up here. And what this will do now is it will play the animation for him sitting down. So I'm going to press play and switch back to scene view. And there we go. You can see him sitting down in his chair. So we just need to kind of move him a little bit more forward and across a little. Like I say, the, the whole animation for him, because we've inverted it, it's not quite right, but it's just a case of aligning everything just right, pressing play. So we want the animation to stop pretty much there. So on top of that, I did mention we were going to have a bag on his head. So we've got him almost ready. So let's bring in that bag. So let's go to our objects folder and I'm going to bring in this barrel box bag folder. And you can get this on the website for free. Head over there, download an assets, Grand Theft Auto series, tutorial number 10. <clears throat> you can get it there. So this contains a couple of things, but they'll come in useful later on anyway. The only thing we want from this is the bag. So again, it's an FBI, uh, well, technically an FBX, but it contains these objects. So we just need to bring in this mesh bag. But what we can do is if we bring the whole thing in, and then you can see right here, we only need the sack right there. So I'm going to take this sack and I'm going to drag it onto our NPC right there. Click continue because you want to break the uh, entirety of it and delete everything else. So now we have this sack model. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's zero it out and bring it into position because we want it to cover his head. So nice and simple. Bring it to there. 
we may want to actually delete his hat. So let's find his hat or his head in general if you wanted to. So I'm going to take this object here, which is his hat. Delete. Yes, we want to break it. So what we need to do, bring the sack, probably shrink it a little bit because it looks a little bit too big. So let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, maybe that'll do actually. So we just bring it forward that little bit and maybe rotate a little on the X. I guess maybe the Y, uh, Z, sorry. I guess it's all about your alignment here, how you want it to kind of align nicely. So the idea of what's going to happen now is it will animate with this bag attached to it. So if we press play, head back to scene view. Oh, and it's not quite working, but that's fine. We can actually deal with that uh, in, a, in a separate way. So we need the bag to be there where he's sat right now. So if we move the bag to that position, that will be set ready for our scene. So I'm going to bring the bag uh, to here and down. Let's press play. So we're just aligning everything. And remember, this won't be seen because it'll be off camera. So we just need to bring it down a bit more. And I've said it 600 times in this series already. What the camera doesn't see doesn't matter. So again, I think we just need to bring it down a little bit more. So down some more to there. And finally, this should work. There we go. So he'll keep doing that. And there we go. So all we need to do is bring the bag a bit further this way. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether this is going to work as I intend it to do. But I'm hoping his animation will complete by the time we get to that second camera. Yep, it does. There we go. So that's looking, that's looking okay, actually. I'm quite happy with that. So we have him in place. We have uh, the two cameras in place. So what's next? Well, let's add in some more UI. Much in the same way as we have the uh, on the canvas, we have the lead designer credit right there. Uh, if you remember, it kind of fades in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to animation and we're going to make it fade out. So let's press record. And we've got it fading in over a second, so we'll display it for three seconds. So we're going to need to go to frame uh, 6, 12. So we want three seconds after this one. So we need to add 180 to 60, which is frame 240. And at frame 240, we need to set the alpha retype 255. Hit return. And then after another second we want it to fade out so that means 300 frame and then color alpha zero press x press the record and that's that animation completed so we can do the same thing now for our next credit and i guess our next credit is going to be um storyboard so let's create that and instead of actually creating brand new ui what we could do is take the existing UI we've created, turn it on. Let's pan the camera the right way. And is that, how does that actually look? I feel like it's, yeah, there we go. So lead designer, Jimmy Vegas. So what we're gonna do is hold control, press D to duplicate. <clears throat> and I'm gonna bring this one over here. So let's anchor this on the top left, turn off the original one, which is right there. And now let's work with this. So we need to change that cred and we'll just have this as story. Now, I just want to actually check if I did the animation correctly, because I think I may need to do it on this one as well. Let me quickly check because it's been quite a while since I've actually done this. So we should fade here. Yep. And does it fade out? It does fade out. That's fine. So we do the same for this one. 
And all we need to do is just change the uh, this one here. So cred story name. And this one's going to be storyboard. And because I did run a competition on this, this is going to be two people because they created between them the story of what this tutorial series is going to be. That's Jose Garcia, as well as Mark Fuller. So that means these two right here should have the same animation. So I'm hoping, I'm actually hoping if I press play now, the animation will play correctly. Yes, it does. So what we need to do is modify our sequence scripting. So let's turn that off. Let's head to the um, script if I can find it. I forgot where I put it now. Sequence holder, that's it. So we're going to go with uh, cam switch because we're still dealing with that one. And I think I'm going to have the first credit appear a little sooner so we can kind of get the credits going. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. I'm hoping this tutorial doesn't go on for too long, guys. Uh, yeah, so once we've done this, we're going to do uh, some, a quick line of text at the bottom. That's going to be some subtitles. Then we're going to bring in some ambience. And that's really going to make the scene feel more alive than what it is. So by the end of it, it's going to be pretty cool. So next, we're going to have public game object. And this is going to be cred story semicolon. So I'm going to have it after two seconds. We have the lead designer uh, come active. And then after three, we, uh, so how long is it going to be? It comes on. And after three seconds, it goes off. So it's five seconds total. So we need five. So that's four. Yep. We're just aligning all the sequence up now. Don't worry, guys. And as we go to the second camera, we're going to have cred story dot set active true semicolon and save. So let's head back to Unity and let's add that over here when it compiles. So cred story bring over. And next, let's add in some subtitles. And I'm going to take, uh, quite simply, just go game object, UI, text. We'll have this at the bottom. That's where subtitles usually are. We'll have it white. And we're going to have this say, so the first line of this game is going to be um, basically, you asked for this, George. So I'll tell you now how the sequence is going to pan out. What's happened is the guy in the chair, his name is George. Our main player is called Steve Lorenzo. So you can see there's a little bit of a, not an altercation as such, but it implies that uh, Lorenzo has kidnapped George. And that's how this is going to pan out to start with. So you asked for this George. We're going to have this as subtitles text and um, this is going to stay on screen for now but you can see where this is leading and how this is going to appear so let's press play now and just see how this pans out so far so good so you asked for this George would appear around about now and this is where the two characters would be interacting, but I, I noticed something there. Uh, I kind of noticed it didn't quite align properly when we came here. Yeah, so have I changed something here? I did, because I took a second off, didn't I? So I'm going to have that as two and then add in that extra second that I removed uh, here. So let's resave that. So that should pan out just fine. So. Let's add in some sound effects now. Now we've already added in those footsteps and we know how to deal with this, but we're going to create a new folder here and have it as ambience. 
And within here, I'm going to bring in four sounds. So bring them in here. And you can get these on the website as well. Downloads and assets. Obviously, Grand Theft Auto series. It'll take just a second to bring in, but we're going to play around with these sounds before we finish this tutorial off. So let's attach them to... Um, well, I'll tell you what, let's zoom in on the scene so we can actually see a little more. So let's go to our contract killer here. And we have some objects already, which is the left foot, right foot. And I'm actually going to go game object, create empty. And that game object is going to be here in the middle. And I'm going to rename ambience. And then in there, I'm going to create a new game object. And this is going to be wind. And then I'm going to drag and drop the wind sound onto there and decrease the volume to probably about 0.1, maybe 0.15. We'll see how that sounds in a second. And at the same time, I'm going to have another sound playing, which is just basically seagulls. Because remember, guys, this is supposed to be like a warehouse, a dock kind of place. So it's the sort of thing you'd expect to hear. And I'm going to have this now as uh, seagulls. And I'm going to have this a little bit louder, so maybe 0.2. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to use both of these foghorn sounds, but I'm going to attach one of them to the second camera, just so it plays when that second camera becomes active. So on the second camera, I'm going to create a new empty game object. And we'll call this foghorn01. And we'll drag and drop foghorn01 onto there. And I think... I, I do believe this is quite loud, so I'm going to reduce the volume to about 0.1 and save my scene. So let's see how this sequence pans out now. Okay. So, yep, that's looking fairly decent. So... I'm hoping you guys can now see how this scene is coming together. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, there's not a lot more to it. This is all going to come together quicker than what you think at this point now. So there's not a lot left to this intro scene before we get into that big open world. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is bring in some uh, voiceover. Uh, we're going to work on those subtitles and create a script which allows us to control the subtitles a little more. And we'll probably look at the third camera which is going to be our character pointing a gun at George sat in a chair. So that's all coming up in the next tutorial. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.